Mikhail and Margarita Zatla were ordinary people, people with simple joys and sorrows, hopes and fears, like everyone else. And yet, a storm was brewing, a storm that would rage through Europe, altering Christianity for all time to come. Mikhail and Margarita Zatla were swept up into this storm of change, becoming some of its first casualties. Although their lives were cut short, although they labored in the cause of truth for less than two years, the work they set in motion continues to influence people to this day. Very little is known of Mikhail Sattler's early days. He was born in Stauffen, Germany, around 1490. Later, he entered the monastery of St. Peter's near Freiburg. It is believed that Mikhail eventually rose to the rank of prior, second in charge of the entire monastery. This was a position of power and respect. It essentially made Mikhail a member of the upper class. Such a position would also suggest that Mikhail had an honest work ethic as well as being a capable administrator. He had a trustworthy character. Mikhail was an intellectually honest man. As such, he was also devout in his beliefs. When spiritual renewal came to St. Peter's via the inter-Benedictine Bursfeld Reformation, Mikhail was actively involved. As prior, he may even have been in charge of it. But change was coming. Abraham Lincoln observed, when a man who is honestly mistaken hears the truth, he will either quit being mistaken or cease being honest. And Mikhail was honest. In the mid-1520s, Protestant peasants captured St. Peter's Monastery. They demanded freedom from overtaxation and justice from the oppression of the nobility. Some of the peasants were Anabaptists. Anabaptist means baptized again. Most, if not all, Europeans at this time had been baptized as infants. The Anabaptists, however, rejected infant baptism as unscriptural. How can a newborn infant make a knowing decision to serve Yahweh, they demanded. Anabaptists believe that only consenting, believing adults should be baptized. Therefore, they chose to be re-baptized as adults. Because Mikhail was the prior of St. Peter's Monastery, it is probable that the peasants presented their appeals directly to him. No written record of his thoughts on the matter has been preserved. However, three facts are known. 1. Mikhail Zatler was intellectually honest and a devout Christian man. As such, when truth was pointed out, he did not hesitate to accept it. 2. Mikhail left the monastery in mid-1525. 3. After leaving St. Peter's, Mikhail travelled to the Volschut area from where many of the revolutionaries had originally come. With these known facts, it is safe to conclude that as an intellectually honest man, Mikhail became sympathetic to the peasants' cause and at least intrigued by their beliefs. Just a few months later, from November 6th to 8th of 1525, Mikhail attended the famous infant baptism disputation in Zurich, Switzerland. He probably wanted to hear the arguments both for and against the subject. The Reformation at this time was well established in Zurich. However, the Protestants there had not yet grasped the concept of true religious liberty, the right of the individual to worship freely as dictated by his or her own conscience. Protestant authorities in Zurich vigorously persecuted the Anabaptists. Mikhail was arrested and thrown into prison. He was released on November 18, 1525, after promising to leave the region. This early opposition was simply a foretaste of what was soon to come. Sometime between when he left the monastery in mid-1525 and 1526, Mikhail married a woman by the name of Margarita, who had been a nun. Like Mikhail, Margarita was intellectually honest. She had left the order based on her personal convictions of truth. In June of 1526, Mikhail was re-baptized as an adult. 
This took great courage on both of their parts, for it is probable that Margarita was also rebaptized. It is a fact recognized by many recent historians that the persecution of the Anabaptists surpassed in severity the persecution of the early Christians by pagan Rome. Persecution began in Zurich soon after the Brethren had organized a congregation. Imprisonment of varying severity, sometimes in dark dungeons, was followed by executions. Within a short period, the leaders of the Brethren lost their lives in the persecution. Anabaptism was made a capital crime by other Protestants. Prices were set on the heads of Anabaptists. To give them food and shelter was made a crime. The Duke of Bavaria, in 1527, gave orders that the imprisoned Anabaptists should be burned at the stake unless they recanted, in which case they should be beheaded. The dangers of laying aside error and following truth were very real, but to Mikhail and Margarita Zatler, truth was more precious than anything else. In late 1526, Mikhail traveled to Strasbourg, where he stayed with Wolfgang Capito, a German humanist and leading Protestant reformer. While there, Mikhail also met with another Protestant reformer, Martin Bucher. Capito and Bucher disagreed with Mikhail on a number of points, including the Anabaptist stance against infant baptism. Mikhail urged the men to release the Anabaptists they had imprisoned. Despite their differences in belief, Mikhail's kind and gracious spirit can be seen in the fact that he referred to Capito and Bucher as his beloved brothers in God. After Mikhail's execution, Capito and Bucher themselves referred to him as their dear friend in God. This reveals a tremendous amount about the character of Mikhail Zatler. During an era when even other Protestants tortured and burned at the stake those with whom they disagreed. In January to February of 1527, Mikhail shared the truth with others in the village of La, a town north of Freiburg. Times were dangerous. Those who stood forth as leaders had a life expectancy of only two years. Mikhail's was far less. On February 24, 1527, Mikhail presided at a secret meeting of Anabaptist believers held in the village of Schleitheim. The believers gathered at the meeting agreed upon a statement of beliefs. Besides rejecting infant baptism, they denounced the swearing of oaths as contrary to the words of Yahushua. They stated that baptism was merely an outward act to demonstrate a believer's conscious profession of faith and, most startling of all, they called for the complete separation of church and state. Mikhail wrote up their confession of faith in a document called the Schleitheim Confession. This document continues to have an enormous authority among Amish, Mennonite and Baptist churches to this day. Without a doubt, Mikhail and Margarita Zatler felt joy and hope for the future of truth following the successful meeting at Schleitheim. It was not to last long, however. Shortly after the Schleitheim meeting, sometime in March of 1527, Mikhail and Margarita Zatler, along with a number of other Anabaptist believers, were arrested by order of Count Joachim von Zollen. These were normal human beings. The arrest, so quickly following the triumphant meeting at Schleitheim, left the handful of believers feeling shaken and afraid. No one wants to face persecution, torture, and death. From prison, Mikhail wrote a letter to them, encouraging them to be strong and full of faith. I say to you through the grace of Yah, that ye be valiant and walk as become the saints of Yah. Let no one divert you from your aim, but go straight on in all patience, without deviating, that you do not take up the cross which Yah has laid upon you only to lay it down contrary to the honor and praise of Yah, and to the transgression and violation of his eternal, true, just, and life-giving commandments. And let no man remove you from the foundation which is laid through the letter of the Holy Scriptures, and is sealed with the blood of Christ and of many witnesses of Yahushua. 
The strength of Mikhail's conviction, the beauty of his full surrender to Yahweh, can be seen in his closing remarks. He wrote, The brethren have doubtless informed you that some of us are in prison. They threatened us with bonds, then with fire, and afterwards with the sword. In this peril I completely surrendered myself into the will of Yahweh, and together with all my fellow brethren and my wife, prepared myself even for death for his testimony. And then I thought of you, who are but few. Hence, I deemed it necessary to stir you up by this admonition to follow after us in the divine warfare, in order that you may comfort yourselves with it, that you may not become weary of the chastening of Yahweh. Mikhail's words shine undimmed through the centuries. His faith in Yahweh, his love for truth was unwavering. The trial took place May 17th to 18th, 1527, in Rottenburg. Mikhail spoke in defense of all the prisoners, appealing to the scripture as the ultimate authority in matters of right and wrong. At the trial, Mikhail showed he understood that true spirituality is much more than just lip service to one's beliefs. It is heart work. Is it true, as reported, that you say you would prefer to fight on the side of the Turks against the Christians? Order. Let the accused reply. Have I spoken your words? My meaning was... Answer the court! I said that if warring was right, I would rather take the field against so-called Christians if, as you state, Turks know nothing of the Christian faith, then they are but Turks of the flesh. But you... You, who would be Christians, yet persecute Christ's followers with a sword. You are Turks of the Spirit. You arch heretic! You have seduced pious people! It would be better if you had never been born! God knows what is good. Desperate villain, I tell you, if there were no hangmen here, I would hang you myself! And know that I had done God's service. God will judge. Is there no argument that can convince you of the error of your ways? I can only be convinced by scripture. Our heretic, the hangman, will convince you! Mikhail summarized his defense with great boldness. Ye ministers of Yah, if ye have not heard or read the word of Yahweh, send for the most learned and for the sacred books of the Bible, of whatsoever language they may be, and let them confer with us in the word of Yah. And if they prove to us with the holy scriptures that we err and are in the wrong, we will gladly desist and recant and also willingly suffer the sentence and punishment for that of which we have been accused. But if no error is proven to us, I hope to Yah that you will be converted and receive instruction. After deliberating for just an hour and a half, the judges returned and pronounced judgment. It was an horrific, torturous sentence. He was to have his tongue cut out and flesh gouged from his body with red-hot pincers and then finally be burned alive. Some of the prisoners recanted. Mikhail, however, stayed strong. On May 20th, 1527, Mikhail was taken to the town square in Rottenburg and tortured. Despite everything done to him, his faith never wavered. Even with part of his tongue removed, he continued to pray, saying, Almighty Eternal Yah, Thou art the way and the truth. Because I have not been shown to be in error, I will, with Thy help on this day, testify to the truth and seal it with my blood. He was then pushed into a large fire. As the ropes around his hands were burned away, Sattler gave a signal to his group to show them he was confident about his fate and prayed, Father, I commend my spirit into thy hands. 
Very little is known of Margarita Zattler, but she was soon to join her husband in death. Margarita was obviously a woman of strong convictions and is one of the very few women actively associated with the Reformation. Many of the other women imprisoned with her were wives of the radicals, but many of them were released due to their lack of actual involvement in the movement and because the majority of them recanted after they were captured. Margarita's courage and strength even impressed the wife of Count von Zollen, who had ordered the Zattler's arrest and who was the principal judge of their trial. The Countess visited Margarita in prison, urging her to recant and promising her a place to live at court. Margarita's response to the Countess shows the strength of her own convictions. Why do you offer me this? Because I feel sorry for you. I know what it is like to have one's thoughts and actions dictated by the position of one's husband. I simply see no reason you should suffer for your husband's beliefs. I do not follow my beliefs because of my husband. I follow my husband because of my beliefs. You will not recant, even if, as you must suspect, your sentence is death. No. These beliefs of your husband, your beliefs, you can be that certain of them. Yes. Then I do not feel sorrow for you. I feel envy. God, what will you do now? Wait and pray. Two days after her husband was burned to death, Margarita was taken to the Neckar River and drowned on Wednesday, May 22nd, 1527. They had been married at most for only two years, leaders for less than one. A memorial to Mikhail and Margarita Zattler states simply, they died for their faith. Mikhail and Margarita Zattler's lives were cut short, but their example of faithfulness in the face of death is an inspiration to all who live now at the close of Earth's history. It is also a promise that what Yah did for them, sustaining them through their night of trial, he can do for you too. The testimony of Mikhail and Margarita Zattler, the lesson they teach today, is well summarized by the words of a hymn. It is no secret what Yah can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what Yah can do. The time of trouble is just before us. When the trumpets of revelation begin to sound, there will be no respite until the end. Unprecedented chaos is about to burst upon the world. When demons, posing as extraterrestrial beings, overrun the earth, when the Pope is exalted to be mankind's representative, when false worship is enforced on pain of death, do you have the faith to remain obedient to the law of Yah? A perfect storm is coming. Evil forces, demonic and human, will combine to blot off the face of the earth all who honor Yahweh. Your part, right now, today, is to get to know Yahweh so well that you will cling to him, to his promises and his love and nothing else. Make the choice. Today, continue the legacy of faithfulness begun by the Sattlers and trust in Yahweh to carry you through. <laughs>